Hello again. Today I just wanted to spend uh, um, just a minute talking about experimenting with shutter speed. I was down at Folly Beach uh, helping a student with long exposures and while we were there we just decided to focus in on, on one rock uh, that was near us and look at the results of using different shutter speeds with the wave splashes and just how fast you needed to be in order to freeze the water movement. This one was taken at about 1 30th of a second and you can see here that I still have quite a bit of movement in here even at 1 30th of a second. The foreground is blurring a little bit and if it weren't for this solid rock right here in the middle you would think that I had accidentally been moving my camera because it looks just a little bit strange not just the splash itself but the foreground makes it look like i was moving but i wasn't i was on a rock solid tripod this next one i got a little bit faster this is 1 60th of a second and you can see that there's a little less movement in my foreground but things are still blurred and it's kind of a a mix of somewhat smooth movement with less movement here in the background but it's not really kind of the look that I go for. So when it comes to long exposures on the beach, and again, this is just a personal preference. So any shutter speed that creates an effect that you enjoy, definitely go for it. Um, but I just want to give you some options here. So here's 1 60th of a second. This is 1 500th of a second. You can see that I no longer have any of those streaks in the foreground. And if we look in here, we can see that that wave is pretty much frozen in time. It might even have benefited from a slightly faster shutter speed, but I think I just kind of stopped at 1 500th of a second there. So here I switched compositions, but look at this. I can't see a single solid wave in this image. It almost looks like a layer of fog. And the reason for that is if you look over here and see what my shutter speed was, I was at five full seconds. Now I needed a special filter. I needed a neutral density filter in order to do this because it was probably 1130 in the morning on a bright sunny day. And you can't otherwise get away with that type of uh, length of exposure without the special darkening filters. My long exposure photography classes talk all about these methods using these filters. So, is this the look that I'm going for? I don't know. It looks, I mean, it's interesting and it was fun to experiment with, but what I really ended up playing with was some of these kind of half second uh, exposures that have a little bit of movement. Anything that was kind of slowing down and not moving very much, you can see is pretty much uh, nice and sharp right here. But I have all of this wispy movement in between the rocks here. And these are all raw photos. I haven't processed these at all. so. You can see how the movement, when it curves around a rock, you have just this little bit of a, a blur and streak and movement. And all of these things might be just kind of fun to play with uh, in, in post-processing. So I ended up with, you know, 50 or 60 different uh, images to choose from. So I'll go back and play with one and, and process uh, one or two of them just for fun. Anyway, I just wanted to show you a little bit of a variety of shutter speeds and kind of give you encouragement to go out and experiment with different shutter speeds on various photo subjects. If you don't happen to have an ocean nearby, uh, you know, find a local park that has a water fountain and go ahead and experiment with your shutter speeds with, a, you know, a public fountain in a park. Experiment with different shutter speeds with leaves blowing in the wind, you know, anything. You don't have to travel very far to do this. You can probably just do this down the street or in your backyard. Anyway, y'all have a great weekend. I'll see you soon.